Hey guys, Scott from Fry Props here, and today I just wanted to take a quick look at the brand new PicaVolt. Uh, we have improved the PicaVolt this year for 2017 with a bunch of cool new features, and we're going to probably take a in-depth look at it a little bit later on, but today I just wanted to jump in here and show off some of what I think are the best new features. To start with, you can see that I have a linear actuator attached to the PicaVolt. That is probably one of the biggest new changes that we have to the PicaVolt, that it can actually handle higher amperages enough to run a linear actuator. In the past, uh, it couldn't do that. So I actually have a 12 volt, 10 amp power supply connected to the PicoVolt, which is enough to power this linear actuator. Uh, if you're new to the PicoVolt, uh, it is a, a motor speed and direction controller. It can also be used for low voltage LED lighting to create lighting effects. But today we're gonna be kind of focusing on its uh, abilities as a motor controller. So you can see that I have my linear actuator here wired into the PicoVolt, uh, just into the negative and positive uh, terminals here under motor. And if I adjust the dial on the top of the unit, we can actually extend and retract the actuator. The PicaVolt allows you to record animation so that you can actually trigger a sequence of extending and retracting. Uh, but this year we've actually added a second trigger input so that you can have two shows, which is excellent for use with linear actuators because you can actually have one trigger extend the actuator and another retract it. So I'm going to go ahead and just demo real quick how you program the two different inputs. On the top of the unit here, there's the record button. In order to choose which input we're going to be programming animation for, you just hold down on the record button for 10 seconds. Once the red LED stops blinking rapidly, and starts blinking a little more slowly, you can actually choose which of the two outputs you're gonna be controlling by rotating the dial. See if I rotate it all the way to the left here, the LED will only blink once. If I push it all the way to the right, it will blink twice. So if we wanna program input one, we just rotate the dial all the way to the left, so it's just blinking once for input one, and we release the record button. Now, as soon as we released the record button, you notice that the actuator extended. That's because the dial was all the way to the left. So we can just pull it back and recenter it. There's a little dot here that shows you the center position of the dial. And now we can actually record our animation for input one. So let's say for input one, we want the cylinder to extend. All we do is we hold down record until the red LED starts flashing. Then we let go. Now we're in record mode. We just extend the actuator and then tap record and the PicaVolt will store that animation as the animation for trigger input number one. I've attached two simple buttons to the trigger inputs of the PicaVolt. I've labeled them one and two, so I know which one is which. So now if I hit the number one button, it should play back the recording we have for input one. You notice there was a bit of a delay there. That's because the recording for the PicaVolt, like all PicaVolt controls, is done in real time. So let's go ahead and try to uh, take care of that issue. What we're gonna try to do to cut out that delay is hold down the record button, wait for it to start flashing, and then actually turn the dial before we let go. Then let go, and then tap record. So the program that we've just entered into input one should be running the motor in the linear actuator in that direction for the amount of time that we were recording for. So we can go ahead and test that by pressing the number one button. And you'll notice that the linear actuator now extended quickly when the button was pressed. So now we want to set up our number two button to retract the linear actuator. So we're just going to go ahead and hold down the record button on the top of the actuator for 10 seconds again so that we can get into the uh, trigger or the input select option. Okay, now that the LED is flashing, we just make sure that the wheel is turned all the way to the right and then we can release the button. And we're now programming for input two. So again, we're just gonna hold down the record button until the red LED starts flashing, turn the wheel to the right, let go, and tap record. All right, so we've now programmed into the two separate inputs, two different animations, an extension for input one and a retraction for input two. So we can go ahead and test it out. 
So we can hit the number one button and the actuator will extend. Hit the number two button and the actuator will retract. This new functionality is particularly exciting for escape rooms where you might need a linear actuator to reveal uh, a hidden object or open a container once a puzzle has been solved. So you could, uh, for instance, instead of using a push button, you could use an RFID trigger for one of the inputs so that when that trigger is placed, it activates the linear actuator and opens your uh, container or hidden panel. And then you could attach a hidden reset button so that once uh, the players have finished the game, a technician could come in, hit the reset button to close the panel or box and get ready for the next game. As I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of cool new features in the Pico Vault, and we'll be taking an in-depth look at those uh, coming up. But for today, I just wanted to get out a quick video showcasing the linear actuators working with the Pico Vault and the two new trigger inputs and the uh, ability to program multiple uh, shows essentially for each trigger input. There'll be a link to the product page in the description of this video that uh, talks all about all the new features so you can go over there and check them out before we make the video if you're anxious to learn more and of course you can always leave a comment or a question on this video or send us an email at sales at frightprops.com. Thanks!